Hello, happy Friday. <laughs> um, I'm going to continue reading from The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron. Uh, we're at a new section, which is, uh, yeah, it's week 12. 12 is a significant number, or not, take it or leave it, but anyway, for me it is. And uh, recovering a sense of faith. I think that's timely. Okay. Oh. Oh, unexpected. In this final week, we acknowledge the inherently mysterious spiritual heart of creativity. We address the fact that creativity requires receptivity and profound trust. Capacities we have developed through our work in this course. We set our creative aims and take a special look at last minute sabotage. We renew our commitment to the use of the tools. Okay, cool. Let's go. Yo. Nice, big, and bold here. Yeah. Trusting. T R U S T I N G. Very important. <laughs> a quote from Mickey Hart, a grateful, uh, grateful Dead drummer. Oh, I just messed that up. Anyway. Adventures don't begin until you get into the forest. That first step is an act of faith. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's more doable than uh, sort of <laughs> being stuck on leap of faith. That's a bit scary, like leap way. <laughs> you know, you know um, that act of faith or that... Um, can literally just be, you know, your foot moving and going forward and onto the ground. That's that's lacquer. That's more real and you're connected. Anyway, let me just go right in. Creativity requires faith. Faith requires that we relinquish control. This is frightening and we resist it. Our resistance to our creativity is a form of self-destruction. We throw up roadblocks on our own path. Why do we do this? In order to maintain an illusion of control. Depression, like anger and anxiety, is resistance and it cre creates dis-ease. This manifests itself as sluggishness, confusion, I don't know, dot dot dot. Etc. The truth is, we do know and we know what we know. Hmm. Each of us has an inner dream that we can unfold if we will just have the courage to admit what it is and the faith to trust our own admission. The admitting is often very difficult. Yeah, guilty. <laughs> But yeah, just because something is difficult, okay, it's not impossible. Especially, you know, and it's, it's, I think it's good to embrace. Um, it's enduring, especially if it's like for faith and it's like, oh, anyway. A clearing affirmation can often open up the channel. One excellent one is, I know the things I know. That's her example, but uh, what's coming up in my mind, and it's not original, but I'm borrowing it from a message that I heard in church last year, um, but I'm watching it up, so it's not, no direct quotes or anything like that, but um, so for me, what what's, I think, resonating a little bit more um, is that instead of I know the things I know, um, for me, I feel like I can say, um, but not not fully, but I can say at least, you know, a bit and hopefully getting to know him more and more is that I know the one who knows. And I know that's quite different, but yeah, I just thought I'd share. Anyway, uh, she gives another one. Uh, another is, I trust my own inner guide. <laughs> that's, that's um, I like that. It's almost like... I'm pretty sure I've written something similar to that um, 
in my book or 10 years ago, <laughs> something like that. Um, and yeah, it's not bad because I mean, you can still, there's different levels. Um, it's like, don't scare yourself off. And um, yeah, this is great. I trust my own inner guide. Again, I want to link it back to you, like your gut, your instinct, you know, that inner compass. It's there. I mean, you know, if you're shaking your head saying, mm -mm, you, uh -uh, don't lie, <laughs> you know, it's there. It's inside you. Why else are you here? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's just, okay. <laughs> and, okay, either of these will eventually yield us a sense of our own direction which we will often then promptly resist. A quote from Miles Davis. Do not fear mistakes. There are none. On the topic of do not fear, did you know <laughs> that, um, I'm pretty sure it's way over 365, but um, there's enough um, times in the Bible, 365, where it says, do not fear. So um, when I heard that the other day, you know, I was like, and um, when I do remember it, <laughs> I try to share it um, because I think it's great. And um, it's like every day, you've got one for every day. Do not fear. It's like, yeah, it's there for you. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, and that's, that's from the Bible. And you can take or leave it. I mean, even if I didn't say <laughs> that, you know. Um, that's a pretty, pretty s solid three word <laughs> piece of uh, direction, advice. It's reliable, you know. Um, anyway, let me not get too tangential. Um, this resistance is really very understandable. We're not accustomed to thinking that God's will for us and our own inner dreams can coincide. Instead, we have bought the message of our culture. The world is a veil of tears and we are meant to be dutiful and they die. The truth is that we are meant to be bountiful and live. Uh, the universe will always support affirmative action. Our truest dream for ourselves is always God's will for us. <laughs> that makes me think of, you know, like, okay, Valentine's Day is coming up and, um, if you don't have anyone, um, and <laughs> like, and maybe feeling a bit sad, or <laughs> please don't resort to like, oh, I'm alone on Valentine's Day. No, you don't have to be alone. Like, um, and I like if it sounds silly to you, then oh crap. But like, God can be your Valentine. You know, that's I think that's so sweet. <laughs> okay. Anyway, moving on. Um, Mickey Hart's hero and mentor, the late great mythologist Joseph Campbell wrote, follow your bliss and doors will open where there were no doors before. Woo! -hoo! Follow your bliss. Um, that's like this legendary saying. Even my mom <laughs> she knew that. Oh, she did that so well. You know, you get those people and it's like, yeah, follow your bliss. Oh, it's been a long time since I've read that, heard that, said that. Um, hmm, I like it. I'm going to introduce it. I'm going to write it down again. I like that. Give me another phrase for the year. Or at least for now. It sounds really nice and encouraging and beautiful. And it's like, yes. Okay. It is the inner commitment to be true to ourselves and follow our dreams that triggers the support of the universe. While we are ambivalent, the universe will seem to us also to be ambivalent and erratic. The flow through our lives will be characterized by spurts of abundance and long spells of drought when our supply dwindles to a mere trickle. If we look back at the times when the world seemed to be a capricious and untrustworthy place, we see that we were ourselves ambivalent and conflicted in, the goal, in our goals and behaviors. Once we trigger an internal yes by affirming our truest goals and desires, the universe mirrors that yes and expands it. 
there is a path for each of us. When we are on our right path, we have a sure-footedness. We know the next right action, although not necessarily what is just around the bend. But by trusting, we learn to trust. Mm -hmm. I like that. Oh, this fits in. I'm going to just carry on. Um, so, mystery. Creativity, like human life itself, begins in darkness. We need to acknowledge this. All too often we think only in terms of light. Is that true? I haven't heard that from a lot of people. But, I mean, either or, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's true. Sorry. And then the light bulb went on, and I got it. <laughs> uh, it is true that insights may come to us as flashes. It is true that some of these flashes may be blinding. It is, however, also true that bright ideas are preceded by a gestation period that is interior, murky, and completely necessary. We often we speak often about ideas as brain children. What we don't realize is that brain children, like all babies, should not be dragged from the creative womb prematurely. Sure, heavy. <laughs> um, ideas like, uh, sure, it's just... <clears throat> ideas like uh, <laughs> stalactites and Salicmites, I'm not sure what those are, um, I'm eager to learn, form in the dark inner cave of consciousness. Are those, are those crystals, what are those? Stalactites and stalagmites. Ideas like stalactites and stalagmites, what? Okay, whatever those are, they form, okay, so, <laughs> cool. In the inner dark cave of consciousness, they form in drips and drops, not by squared off building blocks. We must learn to wait for an idea to hatch or to use a gardening image. Yay, surprise! <laughs> we must learn not to pull our ideas up by the roots to see if they are growing. Yeah, in comes a quote, yeah, um, like. Uh, oh, there's a couple of phrases, you know, t-shirt phrases, sticker, cups, whatever. Um, I love those quirky little um, garden nature quotes. Some of them are like funny and true and others are cheeky and a bit weird and others are trendy and easy to forget and then, and then others are like carried through history, adapted and nobody really has like you know, the 100% like authorship um, of it, but it's enough to share. Anyway, um, the, one comes to mind, um, don't uh, dig up in doubt what you planted in faith. Um, and I guess for me to translate that, it's like, it must wait a little bit, you know, if you planted a seed, you know, and it doesn't come quickly, there's stuff happening, you know, so. And that stuff is it's going to happen underneath the ground, not whew, the bugs just want to come in and join the party. Yeah. And um, that's that's where it's meant to be to to begin. And so, yeah. Um, anyway, um, it's interesting. <laughs> um, it's like, uh, yeah, just just wait. It's going to be OK. You know, while the seat's busy underground, just wait a little bit. Um, uh, you know, <laughs> you can learn either way, you know, by, by, you know, you can try and like take the seed at different stages and check, you know, and like, oh, pull it out. Is there roots? Okay. But yeah, if you leave it in and, and let it come out by itself and when it pops through the ground and says, hello, um, yeah, <laughs> then you could just say, Ooh, okay, watch it. But the thing is like, that's where it's meant to be. And, um, you learn and it's like sort of teaching you and you're it's this whole interactive thing um and yeah it's it's really profound but yeah um very realistic key um tip 
is, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's going to stay in. <laughs> Um, if, you, if you're going to take it out, then there's not going to be... <laughs> uh, so I know I'm laughing at a lot of inner jokes right now, so I probably seem like an insane person. Which is fine, it's okay. Um, but yeah, wait a little bit, um, you know. Uh, your roots, roots to fruits, um, is, uh, you know, it doesn't just happen like that. And, and before... Before that is a seed, and okay, I'm now I'm skipping over a lot, but there's loads of things in between, and it's all amazing. But it's like, you know, it's this whole process, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, and what's really cool about it is that. Yeah, I mean, one thing is to garden. I mean, I understand everybody loves plants, you know, dry plant, you have your opinion about it. Okay, that's like one piece of it. I do. But there's just something so special. Um, and you can't really get an idea of it fully or like fully understand it unless you've actually done it. And it's really great to um, do it with a person or, I mean, to just try and just try and get it right. It's at least, you know... Yeah, like once in your life, or you do it with another person once in your life, you've got to plant a seed, you know, like some seeds, um, you've got to get that experience in, like I highly recommend it. <laughs> um, uh, we can make a plan, I will come and I'll support you, we can do it together, video call, whatever the case may be, just to plant a seed together, because... Um, yeah, once you've actually done that here, real, in, in life, <laughs> and then, you know, you go through that process, it's like really, really amazing um, feeling and experience. I mean, I can't really describe it except for saying, like, there's a point where you, 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 you're kind of um, naive uh, and you can't rely on any, like, opinions or anything that you say about it if you haven't actually sown some seeds and you haven't actually done that. Um, and it's nothing to be ashamed about. It's like, if you haven't, okay, that's a great incentive to do that. And if you have, okay, <laughs> you can still do it. There's so many different seeds and sure, I'm convincing myself to get more into it. But I mean, I am, it's just, yeah, it's just really, really amazing. Um, and I know there's a lot of la -di da stuff about gardening and da 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 da, -da. But, um, a lot of it is experience. <laughs> It is kind of magical and mysterious, and yeah, you can try it. Um, even if you just have, you can start with some. You know, you, there's no excuses. You can start with like in your place uh, under a light, <laughs> it, like in a stream of light. You know, you have a little thing, put some soil in it, put a seed in it. I mean. I will send you a little um, seed growing kit. <laughs> I have them ready. <laughs> That's how passionate I am about it. Um, and uh, you can have that experience. It's really, really vital. Um, anyway, I'm just going on and on and on. Sure. I I can relate to you if you're feeling a little bit annoyed right now. I'm also. So let's go. Um, <laughs> we must learn to wait for an idea to hatch. Or, to use a gardening image, we must learn not to pull our ideas up by the roots to see if they are growing. Mulling on the page is an artless art form. It's fooling around. It is doodling. It is the way that ideas slowly take shape and form until they are ready to help us see the light. All too often we try to push, pull, outline and control our ideas instead of letting them grow organically. The creative process is a process of surrender, not control. Hmm. Sure. Out of this whole book, that's probably one of the most profound lines of the whole book. You know, to, to at least to let sink in. The creative process is a process of surrender, not control. Yeah, ooh, that's that's got to sink in. I think that can really help um, 
in a lot of ways to to, to unlock a bit of a like, stubborn <laughs> grip, you know, um, if you think of it that way. It's a process of surrender, not control. Hmm, that sounds like it's gonna let <laughs> let some spaces in your in your mind, in your life, whatever the case may be. Um, breathe a little bit, unlock some places, set some things free, get those aha moments. That's really a great line. The creative process is a process of surrender, not control. A process of surrender. Hmm, okay. Albert Einstein, the most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. Theodore Rothke, what shakes the eye but the invisible? Question mark. Mystery is at the heart of creativity. That and surprise. All too often when we say we want to be creative, we mean that we want to be able to be productive. Now, to be creative is to be productive, but by cooperating with the creative process, not forcing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you ever like, hear or read something and, um, and you think, you know, if, if you did something naughty in class as a kid and you had to write like, 200 lines of the same thing just to get it in your head like that's that's something <laughs> uh, as creative channels we need to trust the darkness we need to learn to gently mull instead of turning away like a little engine on a straight ahead path this mulling on the page can be very threatening I'll never get any real ideas this way <laughs> be fret that's probably a nice thought. I mean, there's a lot of other yucky, yucky thoughts that swirl around with that kind of thing. But yeah, hatching an idea is a lot like baking bread. An idea needs to rise. If you poke at it too much in the beginning, if you keep checking on it, it will never rise. A loaf of bread or a cake baking must stay for a good long time in the darkness and safety of the oven. Sure, her metaphors is like whew, all over the place. Wow. Open that oven too soon and the bread collapses. Or that cake gets a hole in its middle because all the steam has rushed out of it. That's a that's a cool image. You know, sometimes you feel like Yeah, it's like that. <laughs> like a cake that um got pulled out of the oven too quickly. <laughs> When you've just gone on too long and you push and you force and it's like and then after the fact you realize sure, your core is like gone out of you. You you have like some parts of the outside of yourself but you feel a bit faded. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um I, I sometimes I really wish I could like project project or transfer what what I see in my mind as I'm like busy talking because that will help make a lot of things make sense but unfortunately I can't always communicate that and uh, a lot of the times I truly I can't even assume and it would be really hard for me to even follow instructions as to how to possibly um, even conceive like um, even just like a very inaccurate sort of view of like what it is like to experience me <laughs> like, other than from not me I mean I just can't <laughs> um, so yeah like anyway I don't know is it I, yeah it's either weird but weird in a good way to accept you know like okay I know that there's parts of myself that I don't understand but I think that's okay like um I can appreciate that, um, and those parts may be parts that other people may understand or may think they understand, or maybe those parts may seem like it's open to picking and judging, where it's like, mm -mm, it's not, we all don't know, we don't know, <laughs> who's to say, 
but the, those parts of us, you know, um, that's not null and void, <laughs> um, you know, uh, it's like, well, that's not like this, there's not no reason for it to be there, well, it's hard to find language for, um, and it's like, yeah, it's like that nothingness that might be there, there's more to that, you know, but I guess, um, I don't want to get, like, <laughs> I don't want to jump off the waterfall of what, <laughs> what I'm trying to say because then I won't really be speaking any kind of <laughs> language that um, uh, will make sense. Um, but uh, I guess, you know, with those parts of you that you don't really know or that, that are like um, little <laughs> holes, you know, like, <laughs> you know, and maybe a bit empty or like little craters or like little... Um, Puffs of you know, like little collapses, <laughs> like of the cake or whatever, or little you know gaps and stuff. Um, that's not necessarily that you're broken. It's just like you're still gonna fall in, and like who better to help you develop and grow into like who you you were create you were uh, hello <laughs> who you were created to be. So you're still gonna find out. And who who better like to guide you than than God? I mean, the Creator. And, um, yeah, I understand there's, like, so much more, um, like, before that. I mean, um, you know, there's more to understand than just that. But it is me, you know, like, I think that's really awesome because it's, like, um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel very grateful. Um, and I can't explain it, but I feel very grateful for, like, that in this life I feel like, I can say that I know the one who knows, and I'm, I can't claim that I, oh, I know him fully, you know, like, it's, nobody can, but I have a connection with God, I mean, that's, that's literally why I'm here. If I didn't have that, sure, I would be, I mean, there's not even words, I'm like, why, you know, so it's, it's literally all, I mean, yeah. You don't even have to think too hard. Um, or, yeah. Or too far. I mean, I can think about it as much as I want to, or as little as, or. But if I just think of it like. And I don't even. I can't even say, like, where I would be. But I know that I wouldn't be here. I, like, would literally not be here. I know that that. Because it's like, I don't know, far past so many expiry dates. It's like so many impossible things. It's like, and um, maybe one day <laughs> I'll begin like actually going into those things and unfolding them. But I sort of have in a way with different people. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, but I mean... I don't know, God is really amazing, and for me, it's like, he really made it clear. <laughs> um, like, when I look at my life, I'm like, yeah, it's impossible that God was <laughs> um, absent. <laughs> That's why one of the things that, like, I really feel strongly about is that not only will he never leave me nor forsake me, and that's the same for you, um, but he... He has never <laughs> left me nor forsake, forsaken me. And, like, that I realized in so many different, like, time senses. Um, and, uh, like, yeah, I mean, it's just, and it, like, that became, like, really true. It's like, it went, and it just reflected and, like, just came into my whole body, like, as it, like, oh, oh, wow. And it's, like, I think that's one of the one of the things that I can say that's that I felt like that was a part of me that was really like that became real um, we and like I think that's why it was so profound and I can't fully really explain it um, but yeah I mean there's certain things it's like there's it's God. You just know it's God. It's like it's just Him, and 
Um, yeah, now I'm sort of just thinking. Brandon Lake um, wrote that song, um, Hallelujah. Sometimes it's called Gratitude. I mean, but like, but um, those lyrics are beautiful. I'm actually like, it's almost like in my mind, it's, I'm hearing it. Um, I'm almost wanting to sing it. I'm nearly done with this, but like, I'm clearly, um, <laughs> there's clearly something I need to get out. <laughs> Oh gosh, I'm so silly sometimes. Oh yeah, 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 okay. But um, yeah, part of the lyrics, it's it's like um, I know it's not much, um, I've nothing much fit for a king, but all all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, and uh, yeah, I do recommend go check that out. And um, I almost feel like I want to sing it, but I am aware that it's, you know, spent a considerable amount of time um, doing this now, and um, I know that there's a possibility that um, that uh, Dali might just say, <laughs> that's, you know, I'm too embarrassed to, you know, I'll just discard the whole video. So I'm not going to take too much of a chance <laughs> right now. Um, but yeah, just coming back to like, if that is all that you have, the hallelujah, as an expect, if that is literally like all that you have, it's like whatever the rest is, okay, but, and you can give that to God. you can express it to him I mean that is it is the highest praise it's so beautiful and when you do express that like, with your with your heart like <laughs> your, your your deep heart your your spirit being um, and that that expression so heartfelt it's so intimate it's so out there you know nobody can take that away from you and you can really um, just really, really, really just expand and just, just go somewhere else um, and just just go to God and just really, really profoundly connect. It's truly amazing. It's sure. And I mean, for me, like the things that we we're just reading about, you know, like creativity, trustworthiness, mystery, uh, mystery, mystery. <laughs> and then and all these things, it's so... It's so beautiful how it all comes together and it makes sense in the ways that it doesn't make sense and that makes sense but I think that <laughs> overall when things sort of come to the point where it's like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know, God is good. It's like again and again and again. What a great place to come back to. It's like uh, another thing is being made so clear that's also undeniable like it's really you, i mean you can't what <laughs> that just is i mean how awesome is that um you know i mean it's part of who he is and yeah i mean for me right now um yeah i don't think i say thank you to to God enough in my own intimate time. Um, I mean, I don't know, sometimes I just feel in my spirit like more and more. I just really want to just express it more and more as much as I can. And I know that's like, that in my like fleshly capacity is not good enough, but in that sort of um, intimate place where him and I get to know one another and he knows me he knows me all he knows all of me he knows every part of me and he knows all the bits of me even the parts of me that I've lost he knows that you know We're not, even the parts of me that I lost that I had and then I lost or that got changed or it's all of it he's got that all he knows all of that I mean, and and then he he still loves, he still stays, he sees, you know. 
and I mean like and it's like it's God is first above you know like even if I whatever the storm of emotions of like I am not enough to overpower who he is and what he is and like you know God is love and if he loves me and he doesn't he never leaves me nor forsakes me I'm not going to reject that um and even if I'm in a place where and God can even God has loved me in times where I've been you know, in my own opinion, like truly a horrible person because I would sometimes really, really be in a place where I'd, like I wouldn't even want to admit, you know, like because I'd you know, I'd feel like that would make me even more of a horrible person. But I've been in places where I've like really horribly just hated myself. And it I mean that sounds like yeah. Um and it sounds like yeah, because there's certain times and places where the fullness of that um, is felt and expressed um, in yes safe ways, but I mean that's pretty hectic, and you can't you can't wait, live like that. And I think that's one of the most beautiful things. I think <laughs> because we can get so intense like that, <laughs> God's really great at <laughs> at handling those situations, you know. Um, and the thing is like. Whatever I think of myself and uh, or whatever I feel, if he's still there, it's like, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna go with God. <laughs> I prefer that. <laughs> All this stuff, okay. <laughs> um, I love him even more for like um, still being around. Like I could never do that. So it's like, I don't know. I don't think I'm doing justice to what I really want to express. But I guess, yeah. Um. Um, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I it is um every breath is with Alleluia. And I'm not saying that blase, you know, like just there's a lot of and I don't feel like I need to understand. Um that's yeah. That's that's so there's so much with that. Um, there's so much embedded within that that when you, yeah, that every breath is worth a hallelujah. Even just one breath. And I'm not saying that's constant all the time, but like when we have gotten to places where that was so, 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 so much, so profound, like I. Um, and then it's amazing how it like that it doesn't just stop there. <laughs> you know, it's, it's there can be, you know, trickles everywhere. So it's like, yeah, you know, um, whatever it is, you can praise God for it. You can just say to God, Hallelujah, I praise you, thank you. I'm giving glory to you, glory to the highest. Thank you, Creator. <laughs> you know, you can look up to Him, and um, just thank Him. And it's not to parade for others. What are they going to do? <laughs> They're not going to bump you up. It's for you to um, have that connection and experience that um, expression and that, you know, that that beautiful whatever it is that you experience in that relational um, capacity. But all these words that I'm trying to say are seriously not good enough. But anyway, <laughs> um, you yeah. know. Yeah, but yeah, for me it's it's just really it's like you look at life and it's like <laughs> it's kind of like beyond the point. It's like all is lost. You know, it's it's impossible to be alive. You know, it's like okay. I mean, the devil does come and try. I mean, Jesus was tempted. <laughs> like the devil came and he tried and he tempted. And um, the devil still, it's like, don't, don't be fooled. You know? it's like, that's still happening. But, you know, um, something I want to bring up again. Um, I'm not laughing about it, like, but I'm just, I'm just saying I'm not this, you know, 
you know, make sure that you have a good, re solid relationship with God and that you keep that consistent. It's really going to help you with life. It's essential to life. Um, and it's that faith, <laughs> that faith connection is like, yeah, because um, you need that. You need God. <laughs> we need Him. <laughs> and, um, oh boy, can you, yeah, it's amazing <laughs> what you can observe. <laughs> What happens, what can happen in life, you know, it's like, and I'm like, yo, yo, um, I am aware of <laughs> some things, but God is great. <laughs> um, God is great. He is, is victorious. It's like, he doesn't have to do it again. Like, that's the thing. He has already, he won already. So it's like, that's still the same. I think... Yeah, that's, I mean, that's awesome. It's really awesome. It's like, oh, okay, that's done. I don't have to, you know, I think sometimes um, there can maybe be a, a weird kind of thinking sometimes where it's like, um, oh, I need to, I need to do this. I need to win and maybe forget, like, that a lot of things are really done. It's like, no, no, that's not... <laughs> Leave that alone, you know. It's like, don't get so distracted. Like, you're not the one. Jesus already, <laughs> he already did it. God's already set up so many things for you. So for you to try and um, save the world and things like that. Start with you. Go to God and learn about who you are, why you're here. Um, but just, you know, be inquisitive, especially if, if, if you feel like truly horrific and horrible. And like, it's like, it's you just don't even know why you're here. You can't even think of anything, and it's like it's dark and things like that. Um, I mean, I can't even think of any scenario where it isn't one of the best things you can choose to do to seek God and to seek God first and His righteousness, and and then just basically you know establish some kind of connection and begin, and like you will begin to see the beautiful things that He can do and that He can give you and that He can show you. And like you just let him in, and he's there. He's waiting for you. He's beautiful. He has. It's like he's not gonna force things upon you, you know. Um, and the, the ways that you can learn to understand him and pieces of yourself, you know, it's um, it's not by like standing with your arms folded and like with society, but far off and and um, sort of being like, huh, <laughs> yeah. It's like. Oh, you know, you don't really have anything to say. And you know, really, that um, that all the people that maybe you're trying to like, you know, show, I don't know what for. They, they, they're kind of gonna. They're not gonna be there the whole time. You know, who's gonna be there the whole time? God. And um, I think that you know, life can be very, very real. And um, it's not, it's, I wouldn't advise, <laughs> um, you know, you, or anyone, I, like, I wouldn't want that scenario to happen that way someone is not even aware of, like, that that's, they need to get, get connected with God, they need to have that, because, you know, um, or somebody needs to say something to them, um, and let them know that they, they, there's a way, there is someone, that, you know, um, because, sure, there are, like, tough situations where it's, like, everything and everyone, and it's, like, everything shatters, and everything that you thought you knew, it's just, everything goes, and, um, you know, that kind of thing can happen to a person, and it's, it's so much stuff can start to go... Phew, can really be so hectic and um, I think there are just so many beautiful testimonies I mean like God God knows <laughs> and um, you know he's very aware um, uh, you know so I think like a lot of people um, it's not that it's for us to say oh they're fine you know okay God's got it and we walk away like all high and mighty no no it's not about that but it's like 
thank God that that each of us don't have all the responsibilities or even half the responsibilities that so many people, especially Jesus, but like have had before us. You know, what we have to do, um, or what we have the choice to do, <laughs> we should probably do it, <laughs> is, um, is not much, but it's so amazing. Um, because it's like, wow, you know, the way has been prepared. And um, yeah, it's like, you can be a part of it. <laughs> you can step in. And I think, yeah, I'm just sort of in my head. You know, I want, I want people to know God. I want whoever that person is that doesn't know a single thing, that there's people around them and then some stuff happens and somehow that person didn't know yet, <laughs> yet. Um, like, I just want that to be an imaginary scenario. This never happens to anyone <laughs> ever again. <laughs> Um, or that person doesn't have to learn the hard way or be like dragged through life and somehow make it out and be really messed up and have to deal with a lot of things and maybe, you know, and one would hope and pray that eventually they really have a strong relationship with God because only God could have gotten them through all of that stuff, especially when every single person, everyone, 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 even more, even more people and their spheres of influence rejected them, abandoned them, just went out the picture. And it's not about blame or anything like that. You can't really explain that kind of thing. But that's the kind of like, whoa, it's like only God can take you from there. Sure. And deliver you and help you and, I don't know, <laughs> just, yeah. Oh, man. Okay, I, I feel like a, a touch of awkwardness, I'm going to embrace that, and uh, oh, here's the phone saying, battery 15%, thank you, <laughs> that's my cue, I was going to finish now anyway, okay, <laughs> okay. Hmm. <clears throat> Creativity requires... A respectful reticence. That's very nice. Creativity requires a respectful ret reticence. Reticence. Interesting. Reticence. Don't use. I've got to go look into like the fullness of what that actually means. Reticence. Creativity requires a respectful reticence. Hmm, okay. Well, I mean, I am reading from a chapter called Mystery. The truth is that this is how to raise the best ideas. Let them grow in dark and mystery. Let them form on the roof of our consciousness. Let them hit the page in droplets. Trusting this slow and seemingly random drip, we will be startled one day by the flash of, oh, that's it. Hallelujah. Whew, God is good. Sure. Thank God. You know, finally. Ooh, ooh. Devil. <laughs> Foot sack. <laughs> Uh -uh. God is the winner. Uh -uh. I'm with God. You can try, but I mean, you're going to do that anyway. Who are you? God is love. He beats you. You know, and with God, you know, you can get through all that stuff. Even if you fail, you can go to God. <laughs> he can pick you up. <laughs> you don't have to always be a mess and like thinking it. It's like, yeah, I mean. There's a victory, it's there, he reigns victoriously, there's cloud, there's some cloud, <laughs> it's done, that was done, and, um, you know, uh, there's a lot that I'm skipping over now, but, like, I just want to mention something, it's like, um, yeah, I guess I'm just going to touch on it, um, but there's a difference between 
uh, victim and victor okay and um, actually I would really love to go into this a lot more but I it's I, slowly but surely for something else you know um, and I think yeah, with people in a specific context just to keep it safe but I mean that's really really important and um, being you know like choosing to to be a victim that, that what, like you can choose not to not do that that's not to you know out of the choices don't choose to be a victim that's it's not even that I can say there's a measurable thing to to say oh but that's not smart it's just like no no if you're gonna choose to be a victim like it's it's just that's not like that's that's really it's like um then you are like basically let then it's like it's really you're gonna have a horrible time especially if you choose that because the evil is there and it's, it's already attacking and then you're choosing that as well it's like what, don't don't you don't do that because it's like it's really horrible I, no it's not that you, it's like, and I just even want to say more than that. It's not only that you um, can decide <laughs> that that's not what you're going to choose to be. You must. You, you, you must decide otherwise. You choose God. Choose to, to accept life. You choose life. Um, if, you're, if you're a victim, what... It's like then, what, what then? It's like, oh, you're surrendering to the enemy. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Get that out of your head. That's not your destiny. That's not anyone's destiny. Evil cannot, no. Evil's not going to prevail. It's like, mm -mm. no, sorry. If you're choosing to be a victim, get out of that stuff. You know? It's like, that's when you wake up. And it's like you 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 choose you don't choose that. I don't know. Maybe maybe this doesn't come across the best way. I mean, it's not like there's a there's a manual of like how to communicate this. But I mean, what I'm saying is like it's not black and white. But there's like there is like a huge difference. It's like out of the. I mean, yeah. Like if you're having a terrible time, but you're also choosing to be a victim, you're literally choosing. That is, you're looking at that and you're like, hmm, I'm going to choose to be that. And you're having a horrible time. And you are aware, you, and you, that's like then you're identifying with that. And it's like, it's all like, ooh, festive, yucky, ooh. And it's like, and people can pray for people can be around you. They can try as hard as they want to. But if you don't choose, if you don't choose... It's not about pointing or blaming or anything like that. That hectic stuff, the enemy's gonna try and attack. You're gonna feel some hectic s stuff. And if you continue to choose to, like, oh, I'm gonna be a victim, a victim, a victim, a victim, a victim. It's like, it's beyond, like, deserving. It's, it's, it's literally, no, no. It's, you, you, but I mean, at the, you know, you're the one to choose. So it's like, Nothing I can say, you know, but it's like just to to make aware. Um, if you're doing that, stop it. Stop, stop doing that. And you will know, like you know, deep inside you'll know. And I mean, and that whatever that that strikes, um, it's possibly that that strikes sort of something that is more. It's, it's slightly, it's always like a, a fear of the Lord type of thing. I mean, and I would recommend it. You'd rather be in a place of the fear of the Lord than fear of the devil. I mean, what? The, no. God is here. I mean, the whole point of your existence is not to choose to, to be a victim, to give yourself to the enemy, the enemy attack. Or whatever. Uh -uh. How much longer must that kind of thing go on? And so there are so many people that still need to make it. Like, firstly, the choice, like, to stop choosing that. Come now. Like, <laughs> it's not all about you. Um, 
and it's, it's most like come on like out of everything you're gonna choose that I mean so many so many <laughs> you gotta you gotta join the you gotta join the the side of life you gotta choose life you gotta choose ooh uh uh um oh I got some solid advice I'm not gonna say okay I decide to be a victim that's not even gonna be an option for me okay and then it's like okay you can maybe <laughs> look at <laughs> wait I'm gonna decide to yeah sure life I'm gonna choose life I'm gonna choose life you can even in your own moment you know declare that and with that it's like you are deciding to participate <laughs> in it and you know further than that you know I would then even more strongly recommend it's like Jesus says he came here for a reason. Choose life. You can get saved through Jesus Christ. Whatever the other stuff is. I'm not saying you are destined to stay there. You can choose to, to get up from that place. You can choose to not to not be a victim. That's not all that who you are. That's that's like the worst that you can so that's uh uh, don't choose that. Come now, like um, you know, we can all raise each other up and say, Hey, hey, yo. Mm -mm, not that one. No, no, no. We've we've moved on. We're choosing life. We're gonna pick each other up. We're gonna choose life. No more victim stuff. Now come now. Us a belief. Uh uh. We're gonna help each other up. We're gonna help each other grow and become aware. Because I mean, what do we all want at the end of the day? Love, life, connection, all these good things. And maybe we don't all have the words for it. But <laughs> we can bloody well do what we can. To help encourage one another to choose life and to get up and walk this um, way that has been prepared for us together and unite and eventually get to that place where it's like, yo, what we all desire, what we all want, what we all somehow deep inside still like have hope for. And we can't really explain why we're still here, but it's because of that is that draw. You know, and God is the light. You know, it's like choose that. Come on, it's up to you to make that choice. And it's not something to be afraid about. In fact, it will be just so powerful. It will be so empowering. And it is literally as simple as you could say it out loud, and you can talk to God. I choose you, Lord. I is so much. But yeah, do not fear yeah, and do not decide you're going to be a victim. No. At least don't do that. It's a great start. And I guess, yeah, <laughs> um, I just want to say that, yeah, okay, there's an enemy out there, but there's so much more to you than you know. And uh, the enemy, you know, he did not create you. No. Nah. God created you. God created you. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, for me, I would want every person, even the most, who other people consider the most horrible person, I don't know, you know, it's like every human being that was created on this earth, <laughs> I w would want them to know God. Oh, yeah. Anyway, and we can all do what we can, you know. Um, but yeah, it's like I want it so badly, and you can want it so badly. <laughs> and you can pray, there's the kind of other things you can do to sort of help um, help yourself feel like you're, you're trying to help that. Um, sort of <laughs> to happen, <laughs> that you're not sort of stagnant and stuck in that place, like just, oh, I want that to happen, I want that, because you've got to also move on in life, you can, um, you know, sometimes you, you've got to sort of set off or, okay, you're going to, you do you, you're going to, you're going to walk with God, you're gonna, not going to try and save the whole world on your shoulders, you've got to tend to you, you are here for a reason, there's this relationship with God, God is waiting for you, he just wants to love you and show you who you are, man, you are so beautiful, and if you don't see that now, if you hate yourself, okay, put that aside, come on, the, the joy is yet to be experienced and to be seen, 
and there's new mercies and grace every day, every moment, every morning. The joy, <laughs> all these things should be added unto you. It's like the best is yet to come, and the rest is yet to come, and you can find rest in Him. God is your refuge. It's like sure, sure, you can choose life. You can choose to be you. You can choose to stand up and breathe and walk in this life. One foot under the other. You don't have to be stuck. <laughs> you don't have to be under any foothold of any evil. Mm -mm. God is greater. God is good. And God is always going to be there. He is always there. He's solid, <laughs> trustworthy, reliable. Um, yeah, but I mean, yeah, there's hope. And it's uh, always, yeah, hallelujah. We don't even know how many people are like just coming more and more, you know, more and more people coming to God, you know, like the whole world eventually, more than the world, you know. Um, and you are forming this entire body, you know. And it's amazing, you know, spreading the gospel. We don't even know how far it's spread, but it's growing. It's growing. <laughs> yeah, go with God, grow with God. Um, growing grace and goodness and, yeah. Oh, okay. I thought that was the end. You know, here I am thinking I'm wrapping up this book now. But perhaps it is. Perhaps it is. Because, yeah, I almost feel like there is a, there comes a time. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, it could have been that the book ended there. Um, maybe it does for now, <laughs> but anyway, for me, I just want to say, um, thank you, and, uh, I hope that in some way, <laughs> you've been blessed, and, um, yeah, okay, see you when I see you, just know that you are loved, and, yeah, God's got you. Hallelujah.